Hi, I'm Daryl Crow. I'm your art instructor, and I have a brief message here that I'd like to share with every single artist. I get lots of questions from people that ask me, Daryl, you're so lucky. You're lucky to be able to be painting and doing the things you love and making a living out of it. What does it take to become a lucky artist just like you? And you know, that's an interesting question because I had never really thought of myself as being lucky, if you know what I mean. Well, in one respect, if you were married to the woman that I am married to, you would think that's pretty lucky. And having the children I have, that's pretty lucky. And I really have been quite fortunate in my life. But as I start to think about where does luck come into a life of an artist? And I guess when I put it all together and boil it up and jill it around, the thing that comes out is luck is nothing more than preparedness meeting opportunity. Okay? Let me say that again. Luck is nothing more than preparedness meeting opportunity. So what do I mean about being prepared? How, how do I prepare myself so that people will think that I'm lucky? Well, there are three areas I would say. The first one is you need to prepare your resource and your abilities. The second thing is you need to prepare yourself. And the third one is you need to prepare for each event. Let me kind of give you an example of just what I'm talking about. Many years ago, when I was first starting out, um, I had been uh, in business for about six or seven years, and I was starting to work my way up the ladder. In fact, I was what was called technical sales at this company called Zentech Corporation, and it was my job to go out, talk to customers, find out what kind of requirements they wanted, because they all had video terminal, and that's what we sold. We sold customizable video terminal. And so what I had to do was if they wanted a particular keystroke, I had to define it and so forth. Communication, the whole uh, nine yards, even down to the color of plastic. So that was my job. I go out to the customer site. I had to know how we put our, our system together. I had to know the entire process. I had to know what was possible and what was not possible. And my sister, Brenda, had married a young man out in Indiana while they were going through college. And they called us up one day and they said, hey, we want to come out to California and live. And I said, that sounds great. What part of California? He said, well, we want to come to San Jose, right where you guys are. And I said, great. And sure enough, a week later, they showed up. And we're sitting there talking. And I'm asking him, what are your plans for the future and so forth? And he says, you know, I need a job. I need to get a job and go to work and make some money. I still want to go through graduate school, but I need to get a job. And I said, well, what kind of a job would you like? And he says, oh, I don't know what's available out here. i got to learn. So I told him all about my job, all about my company, and the fact that we hired people now and then, and maybe it might be a good fit. So the next day, I took him down to where I worked. And I gave him the whole grand tour. I mean, there wasn't any. I even showed him the bathroom. That's how thorough I was. But anyway, we just went right into, um, I went into my normal spiel because I had to give the uh, tours and spiels and everything to a lot of different customers as they came through. So uh, I was ready for Bill. I talked to him about how we manufacture, what we could customize. And I, I went through the manufacturing department and showed him every single step. And I said, Bill, what do you think? And he looked at it, and he said, you know, there's a problem. And I said, what's that, Bill? Because I was so excited by him, we needed a couple more people in our QA department where he could have just uh, hit a ground floor opportunity and worked his way up. And he says, Daryl, I'd have to start at the bottom. And I don't want to. And I said, well, where do you want to start? He goes, I'd like to have a job like yours. Yours sounds exciting. And I thought about that, and I said, but you're not prepared, Bill. What would you tell someone about just the color of plastic? And he says, I don't know. I'd ask you. And I said, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is you need to be prepared with that knowledge. He said, well, just tell me what it is, and I'll do it. 
And no matter what I told him, he didn't know anything about communication, he didn't know anything about electronics, he didn't know anything about computers, but he wanted to just start, step right into that job and start producing because he didn't want to start at the bottom and develop his skills, develop his experience, and develop his knowledge. And I said, wow, you're in a mess out on the greatest opportunity in the world, Bill. And he said, what's that? And I said, it's the journey. Okay? We don't all get a wand waved over us and then all of a sudden we're smart people. But it is that process that we go through. And we need to enjoy that process. We need to enjoy how things are manufactured and put together. Because once we understand it, and once we've been part of it, it prepares us for what's up ahead next, okay? So what does this mean to an artist? Okay, part of being a lucky artist is someone who goes through the preparation of preparing their resources themselves, learning the skills, learning the technique, learning what you like to do, what you don't like to do, and so you've gone ahead and prepared yourself in order to meet any challenge that's coming up ahead. The second aspect of being prepared is you must prepare yourself. It reminds me of another guy I met a while back ago. His name was Percy. And Percy wanted to get married more than anybody I had ever met. And I had just gotten married the year previous. And Percy said, you know, Daryl, I don't know. We worked on the same shift at this big electronic firm while I was still going to college. He was going to college during the day. And he would say, I don't know, Daryl, I don't know, I don't know. I haven't met all the women there are to meet in this world. I tell him, if you met one every 10 seconds, you still wouldn't meet them all. But, you know, at a point in time, there's one that says, oh, mm, you know, that's the one for me. And, uh, but in any case, finally, it, it boiled down. He says, I'm not ready to get married, Daryl. I'm not prepared to be a married man. I still like being single. So, that's kind of one of my shorter stories, but basically what it is is that each one of us needs to prepare ourselves to actually being an artist, getting used to the concept that we are artists and enjoying it. So we need to prepare our resources and we need to prepare ourselves. And the next thing that we need to do is prepare for each event. Now, before I used to teach a class, I'll go back and rewatch my DVDs. I don't care how many times I've taught that class, I'll rewatch them. I will read the book or the letter or my notes that I have on a project if it isn't on DVD. And I used to feel strange about this. And one day I was talking to my surgeon and we, we were going to do an operation, uh, or actually we weren't, he was, on my foot. I, the only thing I was going to do was lie down and go to sleep and wake up better. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, Dr. Harris says to me, he says, Daryl, uh, are you ready? And, you know, I'm in my little gown, you know, the ones with no backs. And I'm laying there on the, uh, the bed that has wheels on it. And there's 15,000 people around me all poking and jabbing and, and making notes and stuff. And, uh, and I go, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do to get ready. I said, what do you do to get ready for this operation, Doc? And he says, well, I'll tell you what I do. And he says, that's a good question. No one's really asked me that before. He says, but the night before every operation, I reread the procedure just to make sure there's nothing I will forget. And I never forgot that. And I was so thankful that he said that because I felt more comfortable with the fact that before each class that I teach, I will review the procedure. I will review that whole painting. I went to England once to teach a class. The instructor there that was hosting it got really mad at me because she didn't like me preparing the day before. And it doesn't matter how many times you prepare, you've got to review the day before. And, and that's a good benchmark. So here we see that luck is nothing more than preparedness meeting opportunity. Because if you've prepared your skill set, if you prepared yourself to being an artist and you prepare yourself on each event, then you're ready. You're in the go mode. It's like 
you're an alarm. You're sitting right there. And the minute somebody comes into your proximity, you go off. You're ready to go. You're ready to meet the challenge. So I'm going to leave you with this one last word. You can be a lucky artist or you can be a lucky artist. I'm Daryl Crow. I'm your art instructor. And yes, you can paint.